Hey, what's up, guys? So today I'm gonna be showing off the quadratic formula. Ooh, that's a little too thick of a font. So our quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2i. Ooh, there we go. This is our quadratic formula for you guys right here. And, you know, ooh, let me lay down real quick. Um, crap. 9% battery is not going to last me that long. So, let's say this is AX squared minus BX minus C. This is going to be how it is. This, this is... Bro, what are you freaking doing in there? Oh boy. Jesus, my door almost made me bang my kind of do for it. Yeah, I freaking plugged my phone in, so now it shouldn't be telling me to charge it. Okay, so. Right here, we have negative B. So the point of these letters is A is going to be this. B is going to be this. And then C is going to be this. So if I wrote 2X squared minus 5X minus 3 equals 0. And we wanted to solve for X. Well, this, 2 equals A. 5 equals B, 3 equals C. So hopefully you get what it means. So we have negative B. That means we'll bring this 5 down. And then we'll have negative 5, since it's negative B, plus or minus. Okay. So then we have plus or minus, square root of B squared. So then we're just going to write square root of this. So B squared, well... B right here is going to be 5. So then we have 5 squared minus 4AC. So then we're going to have minus 4. And since it's right up, get close to each other, you'll just write these in parentheses. So let's see, where is A? A is going to be this right here. So that's 2. So then I'll have 4 and then 2. And then let's see, what is C? <coughs> Negative 3. Okay, so then we'll have negative 3. And then all over 2a, it says. So what is a? We got 2 right here. Okay. So then 2 times 2. Like this. Okay. So here's what we have so far. So now we will calculate square root. So let's just go ahead and write down negative 5 plus or minus square root of over 4. So let's do this part first. So 4 times 2, since we're using PEMDAS, we'll multiply before we subtract here. So 4 or 2 times negative 3 is going to be 3, negative 3, 2 times. So then you have negative 3 plus negative 3, which is going to be negative 6. So we have negative 6 times 4, and then we get negative 24. So then we have 5 squared, which is 5 times 5. So this is going to be 25 plus 24. Oh my gosh. So then we have this, right, so far. Okay. So then... Well, I'll write this. What is 25 plus 24? We'll add these two twos. We get 4. And then we add the 5 and the 4 on each 
side and we get 9. So then we get 49. Then we're going to be over 4. So we have negative 5 plus or minus. Oh, that's kind of bad looking. Plus or minus square root of 49 over 4. So this is our work so far. Let me just bring this up a little bit. Okay, so what is this number that can be squared to be 49? Well, we get 7. Because 7 times 7 makes 49. So then we have negative 5 plus or minus 7 over 4. Okay, now let's pay attention to how many negatives there are. So we have negative 5 squared. That makes positive 25. Okay, so we get positive 5 from these two negatives, right? So then we'll have 5 plus 7 over 4, since we're doing plus and minus. So now we have 5 plus 7 over 4. What does that make? 12 over 4. Divide 12 by 4, and you get x equals 3. Now let's solve for the other x. So let's see. We do 5 minus 7 over 4. Now let's just bring this down right here so we can see. So then we'll have 5 minus 7 over 4 equals negative 2 over 4. We simplify and we get negative 1 half. So then the x also equals negative 1 half. So boom, we just solve for x very, very, very quickly. So it started off with the formula. Then we get this, and then we get this, and we get that, and we get all this work. And we finally get the answer of x equals 3, x equals negative 1 half. Move on. We're gonna do nothing or we're gonna do something else this time. <clears throat> so erase all of this. It's gonna take a while to erase all of this um work right here. So much work. So much work. Next we'll be learning complex numbers. So let's go ahead and do this. So complex numbers. Let's just write something like 5 minus square root of negative 64 plus 6 plus negative 16. Okay, we're going to simplify this expression using group-like terms. So first, let me just write something over here. So I'm just going to separate this. So if you don't know this, any uh, negative square root is going to be equal to something i. So negative 1, square root of negative 1 equals i. So that means like square root of negative 4, for example, will equal, well, positive 2. Square root of f positive 4 is positive 2. But since it's negative, it's going to be equals 2i. So you should be able to understand that now. So then we'll bring this down and we'll get 5 minus what is the positive square root of 64? 8. So then it's just going to be 5 minus 8i. What do we have here? A plus symbol. And then what do we have next? 6 plus what is the positive square root of 16? 4. But since it's a negative square root, you add i after it. So then you get 4i. So now we're left with this but we still have enough to simplify out of this expression right here. Okay, well, let me just do a different color right here to show you what we're working with. So we're going to use group-like terms right here. So we got 5 plus 6. 
And let's use the black color again. What do we have here? Plus four eye. Okay. So now we have this. So let's focus on the red right here. So we're left with five plus six, right? So then we get 11 from out, out of this. And we have a plus symbol. So using group light terms, we're left with eight. I, hold on, let me just write this down. 8i plus, or negative 4, or negative 8i plus 4i is what we have left to add. So then this is going to be negative 4i. Okay. So then we have 11 plus negative 4i. And then um, we'll get 7i because it's the same as 11 minus 4i. But um, we're just going to write this as an expression. So we're left with 11 plus negative 4i as our simplified expression. Let's erase this and let's move on to our next math lesson. So... Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now, I'm not as familiar with this as um, as those previous things I taught you, but I'm going to try to teach this without getting anything wrong. So let's say we're going to write x squared as a quadratic function. Well, the problem of this, well, let's just write this down right here. It will simply just be... Oh, let me write that a little bit neater. It will simply just be this. Oh, well, let's say negative x squared. Well, whoops. Let's just get rid of this real quick. We oh, I didn't mean to erase that much. Let's go back. So negative x squared... Let me just erase this real quick. Good enough. So negative x squared. Well, when it's negative, it's upside down. So then we'll have... This it's going to be upside down. So then we'll have this. Okay. Whew. Let's go on to the next one. So let's say we're going to do or write 2x squared as a function. Well, let me just say this is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hold on. 2. One. Okay, here we go. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's write this. Okay, so now we got this. So two x squared. Well, it's gonna obviously be the right side up. So two x squared. Well, two. Let's find 2 on the graph. All right, we'll plot this point right here. And then it's going to, as we know, x squared is going to be like this. So um, let's just write this. Wait, no. I got this one wrong. X squared is going to be like this. Negative X squared is going to be like this. 
So um, right here, we're gonna we plot the point two, right? We plotted two. Well, now we're going to take we're going to take two and then write it as a function. So you have to plot it to where it's at point five or two. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so now we got this. So uh you know it's it's pretty it's pretty easy to do this. So we have this equals more or less it equals this since um we have two so we plot down point two and we connect this line over here until it connects to two on the other side. So let's say we want to find four x square or graph for x squared as a quadratic function so let's just write another one of these down right here um so just don't pay attention to this one so let's say we want to write another one of these down right here for x squared let's just go ahead and plot down 10 points so this eight seven six five four or hold on okay this is 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 Dang it, I can't get it to scale. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's good enough. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so 4x squared. So 4x, let's plot the point 4. Four, four, four. So we have this, and then we'll just connect it to the other four. So then we'll plot it from zero. Oh, that's a little too crooked to look legit. And boom, there we go. We, we just graphed it. So we connect each side. And we get 4x squared equals to this. So, um, I don't know if you want to really trust me on this one. But, um, I learned, I learned this part that I just tried teaching you off of Yay Math. So go subscribe to Yay Math to see uh, how he taught me. You can look up analyzing quadratic functions. But, um, that's my best way of explaining it. But I do have enough experience with quadratic formula and, like, complex numbers, so I know how to do that. So hopefully um, that was the most accurate ones that I taught you. But hopefully this can help you with, like, math, homework, or anything. So, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, in a minute because I'm actually going to do some more math help. So, yeah, peace.